The president of Colombia, Gustavo Petro, opened an international meeting to unblock the negotiations between the Venezuelan government and the oppositions. Brazilian President Ignacio da Silva continues his Europe tour. The president visited the Portuguese parliament to participate in the commemoration of the Carnation Revolution. And in Sudan, the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees warned of further displacement of people as thousands flee to neighboring Chad and South Sudan. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Luis Alberto Matos from the Telesur Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin with the news. The president of Colombia, Gustavo Petro, hosted on Tuesday an international meeting to unblock the negotiations between the Venezuelan government and the oppositions. The Colombian head of state reiterated that the purpose of the summit is to reopen and build a roadmap to stimulate and support the dialogue process between representatives of civil society, the oppositions, and the Venezuelan society, the oppositions, and the Venezuelan government. Representatives from Argentina, Barbados, Bolivia, Brazil, Chile, Honduras, Mexico, and St. Vincent and the Grandines attended the conference along with leaders from Turkey, South Africa, the United States, and Canada. During the international conference on the political process in Venezuela, the president of Colombia highlighted the need for Latin American countries to change their history. The history of Latin America is in our hands, in the hands of our people. What is happening in Venezuela and what is happening in Colombia and in Ecuador and in several countries of Latin America and what is happening in Peru when indigenous people are dying what has been happening in Bolivia for many years and in Brazil in Honduras, in Paraguay can decide uh, a path to war and democratic destruction, or we can rebuild a path for peace and democracy. This room, its historical energies and your presence, is to look forward to reconstruction, the democratic reconstruction of Latin America. Petro also expressed his wishes for Venezuela to return to the inter-American system of nations for he said Latin America should not be a space for sanctions, which ultimately hurt people, but a space for freedom and democracy. An uh, election calendar. And the Venezuelan society does, doesn't want sanctions, because sanctions have made difficult the life for the Venezuelan people. The people suffering for starvation running away from hunger, running away from misery. Latin America cannot be a space for sanctions. It has to be a space for freedom and a space for democracy. In, a, in our countries and in the case of Venezuela, we have to share this common path to establish uh, <coughs> an agenda for elections so the Venezuelan people can choose with freedom and without pressions. The Supreme Federal Court of Brazil began on Monday the prosecution and arrest of more than 200 people linked to the coup acts of last January 8th when followers of former President Jair Bolsonaro stormed the National Congress and other government facilities. This is the second indictment process analyzed by the Superior Court, since the first one had about 100 names and most of the judicial officials already voted to indict them as guilty. Among the charges for which they will have to answer are armed criminal association, violent abolition of the democratic rule of law, coup d'etat, qualified damage against the union's patrimony, in addition to deterioration of demolished property. In total, 1,390 perpetrators were denounced by the Attorney General's office for their participation in the attacks by radical group perpetrators who were dissatisfied with Bolsonaro's defeat.
On Tuesday, candidates for the general elections in Paraguay held their respective campaign rallies ahead of the voting day on April 30th. On Sunday, 4.7 million Paraguayans will vote to elect the new president and vice president of the nation for the 2023-2028 term. In this sense, presidential candidates held their campaign rallies in the capital. And on one hand, candidates of the ruling Colorado Party, Santiago Peña and Pedro Aliana, met with a large group of women members of the party who gave their support to the candidates. On the other, on the other Efrain Alegre and Soledad Núñez, who lead the coalition for a new Paraguay, launched their government plan at the Crown Plaza Hotel in Cerro Corra Street. U.S. President Joe Biden on Tuesday formally announced that he is running for re-election in 2024. The U.S. head of state, who would be 86 at the end of a second term, is betting his first term legislative achievements and more than 50 years of experience in Washington will count for more than concerns over his age. Experts said President Biden faces a smooth path to winning his party's nomination with no serious Democratic rivals. However, he still said for a hard-fought struggle to retain the presidency in a bitterly divided nation. Likewise, analysts have stated that to prevail again, the U.S. president will need the alliance of young voters and black voters, particularly women, along with blue-collar Midwesterners and dis disaffected Republicans who helped him win in 2020. After Biden's announcement of his re-election bid, U.S. citizens voiced their concerns regarding his intentions to gain a second term and the possible outcome of the 2024 polls. Well, I mean, I saw the headline, um, and I mean, it's not surprising. I think usually with presidents, when they have when they complete their first term, they still go on for the second term. I think he can be in fine health. I, I certainly am in fine health. But mentally, I'm certainly not as acute as I was 20 years ago, and there's no way he is either. I realize he's surrounded by really intelligent people, but nonetheless, I think it's it's time for a younger person to take over that job. As an American, it's um, it's oftentimes a little depressing to see that our presidential candidates um, we don't have more breadth, so to speak. Uh, but you know, it is what it is, and. I think you're right. I think Trump will be the Republican nominee next year, so we'll, we'll see what happens and um, looking forward to it. The shortage of rainfall due to global warming has forced the Panama Canal to reduce the draft of ships passing through the interoceanic waterway amid a water supply crisis that threatens the future of this maritime route. The Panama Canal Authority said the reductions were due to the recent drought in the region, which has resulted in falling water levels in the nearby lakes. lakes. Despite implementing water saving measures, the authority said the level of Gatun Lake has been falling faster than anticipated, putting pressure on the canal. As a result, vessels transiting the expanded Neo Panamax locks will have to comply with a maximum depth of 14.5 meters down from 15.2 meters, forcing vessels to weight less or transport a reduced volume of goods. This is the fifth adjustment of 2023 dry season. This year has been the most difficult year I have seen in terms of the drought. It has been difficult for the fishers, for the residents, because those who bring their cargo from the other side of the lake have to carry it on their shoulders. When the water was here, the cars would come and fetch it. So this has been one of the most difficult years. Let's take a short break, but first remember you can follow us on TikTok at Telesur English, in which you will be able to see news in different formats, news updates, and much more. All the stories coming up, stay with us. Welcome back from the South. The President of Brazil, President Nacional da Silva, continues his tour of Europe. On Tuesday, the President visited the Portuguese Parliament to participate in the commemoration of the Carnation Revolution. With the ceremony on Tuesday morning, Lula concluded his visit to Portugal after meeting over the weekend with the President of Portugal, Marcelo Rebelo, and Prime Minister Antonio Costa. 
Meanwhile, Lula arrives in Spain on Tuesday, where he is scheduled to meet with businessmen and Spanish trade unions. And on Wednesday, he will be received by the president of the government, Pedro Sánchez, and King Philip VI. This is Lula's first trip to Europe in this third term, in which he has maintained an intense international activity that included visits to Argentina, Uruguay, the United States, China, and the United Arab Emirates. The Italian Coast Guard confirmed that over a thousand asylum seekers arrived from the southern island of Lampedusa on 35 boats that set out from Tunis on a journey during which three of the vessels sank. Coast Guard officials say that between Sunday and Monday they provided aid to a total of 35 boats carrying over a thousand people, all of whom disembarked on the island. During its rescue operations, the Coast Guard and the border police rendered emergency aid to three vessels that were sinking. The first vessel in difficulty was located in Italy's search and rescue zone, a mishap in which three of the people on board are missing. Aid was also rendered to a second sinking boat in the Maltese zone, with 34 people being rescued but 20 others remaining unaccounted for. When authorities responded to the third shipwreck, they found only the lifeless body of one person in the vicinity. On Tuesday, the death toll after twin blasts at a police station in northwestern Pakistan rose to 17 and left 70 people wounded. According to Swat District's police chief, Shafi Ola, among the casualties were nine policemen, three citizens and five under custody suspect terrorists. He also added that several police officers were among those wounded, out of which eight are critical. In the meantime, preliminary investigations revealed that the explosions at the counterterrorism department police station in Swat District on Monday were caused by a short circuit at the ammunition store which caught fire. So far, no group has claimed responsibility for the blast which take place amid a rise in terrorism-related incidents in the country since the Taliban seized power in neighboring Afghanistan in August 2021. When the explosion happened, we arrived here and saw that the situation was very bad and an ambulance and police began to arrive and the rescue operation began. Guatemalan President Alejandro Guillamatei is in Taiwan as a part of a four-day visit at a time of growing tension between Taiwan and Beijing. The government of Guatemala, together with Belize and Paraguay, are the only Latin American countries holding diplomatic relations with Taiwan after Honduras broke its ties with the island last March 26. Yamate expressed his solid friendship with Taiwan in a speech before the legislature and called on the international community to respect Taiwan's sovereignty and territorial integrity. For its part, China's foreign ministry said the government of Guatemala should not assist what it described as separatist attempts by the Taiwanese authorities and reiterated that the One China Principle is an internationally accepted concept on the universal consensus of the international community. North Korea's foreign ministry has expressed support for Russia on the occasion of the fourth anniversary of leader Kim Jong-un's visit and meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin. North Korea's Vice Foreign Minister Im Chong il said Korea wishes both the Russian government and people success in defending the legitimate security and interests of their country. The statement states that Russia and North Korea fall into a historical tradition of fighting against a common enemy and facing the foreign danger of war. Kim Jong-un visited Russia on April 24, 2019 and met with President Putin in Vladivostok. It was the first meeting of the two leaders and the first trip of the Korean leader to Russia since he took over in 2011. Telesur English continues to grow. You can now tune in from 33 different African countries through Starsat, dial 461 and enjoy Latin American alternative broadcast. One final short break and we'll be right back. Don't go away. Back from the South. South African President Sir Maposa announced on Tuesday that his country will withdraw from the International Criminal Court. The South African leader's pronouncements came during this reception of his Finnish counterpart, Sauli Vainamo Ningisto. Ramaphosa detailed that the stance was caused by the 
recent announcement that an arrest warning was issued for Russian President Vladimir Putin, who is expected to attend the BRICS Group Summit in South Africa in August. In 2017, the African National Congress decided to abandon the Rome Statute after the International Criminal Court issued a warning for the arrest of former Sudanese President Omar al-Bashir. Subsequently, that determination was abandoned and now resumed because of the stance of the international organization against President Putin, which is in several countries being seen as a biased, double standard and politically motivated stance. South Africa President Sir Ramaphosa said the decision taken after a meeting of the African National Congress over the weekend was largely due to perceived unfair treatment by the court of certain countries. Yes, the governing party, the African National Congress, has taken that decision that uh, it is prudent that uh, the South Africa should pull out of the uh, ICC, largely because of the manner in which the ICC has been seen to be dealing with uh, uh, these types of problems. On Tuesday in Sudan, the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees warned of further displacement of people with thousands fleeing to neighboring Chad and South Sudan. Despite a tenuous ceasefire between the two warring Sudanese generals battling for control of the country, the fighting has plunged Sudan into chaos, pushing the already heavily aid-dependent African nation to the brink of collapse. Since the clashes erupted on April 15th, at least 20,000 Sudanese have fled the country. Many foreign governors have raced to evacuate their embassy staff and citizens from Sudan, and many Sudanese are desperately seeking ways to escape the chaos. Meanwhile, the UN Population Fund has also warned that the fighting is threatening tens of thousands of pregnant women, including 24,000 expected to give birth in the coming weeks. For 219,000 pregnant women across the country, it's too dangerous to venture outside their homes to seek urgent care in hospitals and clinics amid the clashes. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization reports that in Sudan, a group of armed men have seized the central laboratory of the country's public health system. The laboratory harbors samples of dangerous viruses like polio, measles, and cholera. The WHO delegate in Sudan, named Said Abid, said the biological risk of these pathogens is enormous and reported that more than 450 people have died and about 4,000 have been wounded as a result of clashes between the army and the rapid support forces since April 15th. In Kenya, authorities raised to 89 the death toll among followers of a cult who were brainwashed to believe they would go to heaven if they starved themselves. According to Kenya's interior minister, Kithure Kindiki, authorities have carried out exhumations of mass graves found in a 324-hectare area of the Chakahola Forest in eastern Kenya, where the self-proclaimed Good News International Church was based. Kindiki also stated that the death toll could rise further, as the Kenyan Red Cross said more than 200 people had been reported missing to a tracing and counseling desk it has set up at a local hospital. The cult's leader, Paul McKenzie, was taken into custody on April 14th after a tip off regarding the existence of shallow graves containing the bodies of a large number of his followers. He is refusing to take any food or water, but he said on Monday that another 14 cult members were in custody. The fifth edition of Alba Games 2023 continues on Tuesday in the different venues located in Miranda, La Guaira and Caracas. We now review the competition schedule for Tuesday, April 25th. The Alba's men baseball will have its second day at the Jorge Luis Garcia Carneiro Stadium in La Guaira. Athletes will dispute the fourth day of boxing at the Cancha de Paz sector Playa Grande. Chess will continue at the Hotel Las Americas in Caracas. The road cycling competition will also take place at the Avenidas de la Guaira. The swimming pool complex of the United Nations Park will be the venue of the last day of swimming. And the gymnastics, fencing, soccer and velodrome will also accompany Tuesday sports activities, while the basketball and roller skating will close their tournaments. And after five days of competitions in the fifth edition of Alba Games, Venezuela so far leads the medal list with 84 goals, 91 silvers and 69 bronzes. 
Cuba is second by nations with 29 goals, 16 silvers and 13 bronzes, while Nicaragua accumulated 5 goals, 13 silver and 37 bronzes as a third place. Swimming, skating and Kempo are the sports in which the hosts have been winning the most gold medals. Out of the 36 final stages in three aquatic days in the Alba swimming pool, the Venezuelans won 21, while in Kempo they won all the 15 titles in dispute. In skating, they also had a perfect performance of 12 out of 12, while the Venezuelan anthem was also heard 13th time in the Taekwondo competition that concluded on Monday. We have come to the end of this news brief. Remember, you can find these and many other stories on our website, www.tresolenglish.net. You can also join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Telegram, and TikTok. For Tresol English, I'm Luis Alberto Matos. Thank you for watching.